Okay, hi. Let's let's just before we come around the word, just let's just commit it to God. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity we've had this morning to come into your presence to to sing songs of worship to you and lift up your glorious name. And for the time that we spent around the communion table, just remembering what you did for each one of us. And Lord, I thank you for your word, which is truth, and a word that gives us revelation and, and reveals a bit of what you are. And Lord, I pray for the word that I bring today. Lord, I have clarity of mind, Lord, that I bring the word that you want me to bring. And Lord, I pray for each person here, that they hear what you want them to hear, that they take what you want them to take. Lord, we just invite the Holy Spirit here today. Lord, just give us revelation on your word today. And we just commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Probably one of the most well-known and famous songs in the world, known worldwide, would be this song, which goes, and I'm not going to sing it, and he's all saying, praise God for that. But the words go like this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wrench like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So it's grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear to how I first believed. Through many t- dangers, toils and snares, have already come. This grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and that portion be, as long as life endures. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. And I think, you know, I, I work outside. I think all the guys I've worked with would know the words to Amazing Grace. And, and that's probably the most well-known song inside the church. Amazing Grace was written by John Newton. John Newton was born in 1725 and his mother died when he was six years old. He was then raised by his stepmother as his father was away at sea as a commander of a merchant ship. And at the age of 11, he joined his father on the sea. At the age of 19, he was forced to join the Navy, but he deserted when he found the conditions intolerable. He was captured and he was publicly flogged and demoted. Later, at his own request, he was allowed to work on a slave ship as a servant of the slave trader. Where on that ship, he was brutally abused before being rescued by another sea captain who knew his father. He would end up ultimately becoming the captain of his own ship, plying the slave trade. The slave trading was a humane treatment of other human beings, and they treated humane human beings as nothing more than a commodity to be brought and sold. One time on a homeward voyage, while he was attempting to steer the ship through a violent storm, he experienced what he referred to later as his great deliverance. He recorded in his journal that when all seemed lost and the ship would surely sink, he exclaimed, Lord, have mercy upon us. Later in his cabin, he reflected on what he'd said and he believed that God had addressed him through the storm and that grace had begun to work in him. For the rest of his life, he observed the anniversary of May the 10th, 1748, which is 277 years ago today, as a day of his conversion, a day of humiliation in which he subjected his will to a higher power. He would eventually give up the sea and become a Christian minister of the gospel. And in his church, he would end up having a young man in his church by the name of William Wilberforce, who would later rise up as a politician 
and lead the fight to abolish slavery. John Newton was so struck by the grace of God, he sat down and wrote the poem, Amazing Grace, which is now a song. See, grace is a key characteristic of God. And it's freely available to everyone. You can't buy it and you can't earn it. And that's the great thing about Christianity, the power of grace. See, so many religions, you have to earn your salvation. You have to do pilgrimages to your special places. Or you have to earn salvation by doing various things. But with Christianity, all you have to do is say, Yes, I believe, and it's yours. One of my favourite scriptures in the Bible is Ephesians 2, 8, which says, By grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's a gift. God gives us his grace as a gift. And when you're given a gift, you don't pay for it, you don't earn it, it's a gift. All you have to do is receive it. I got gifts this morning for my birthday. I didn't have to buy the gifts. I didn't have to earn the gifts. I just had to receive them. And it was up to me whether or not I took the gift and just put it on the shelf and not used it, or I unwrapped it and used it. The Oxford Dictionary defines grace as the free and unmerited favour of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. But I like the definition I heard many years ago, which is grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. In John 1.14, it said, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and behold, his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have received, and grace for grace, or grace on grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. We received through Christ, his fullness. Grace for grace, or or grace on grace. So we have a God of abundance. And we can never outdo God. And, And when we think that he can't give us any more, he always does, you know. We we get his love and we think, well, he can't possibly love me any more. And he loves us more. And, and the same grace, we get we, what we think is our portion of grace from God, and we think, well, I've used up all my grace. Can't be any more possibly any more grace available to me. And God says, yes, there is. There's, there's always more grace. There's grace upon grace. Uh, he's a God of abundance. So when Christ brought in the new covenant, he brought it in through grace. As I just read in, in, in verse 17 there, it says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. But see, one of the misconceptions that we have is that we, we think that we're, we're under grace, so therefore we're no longer under the law. Many people think that the law was only for the old covenant. So therefore, because we're under the new covenant, and the new covenant is, is, is a covenant of grace, then the, then the old covenant laws are done away with, and they're no longer relevant. But listen to what Jesus says about that. Because obviously, there was a bit of confusion in, in his days too. Maybe the disciples were discussing it, I don't know. But listen to what he says. In Matthew 5, it says, do not think that I came to destroy the laws of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfil. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, 
one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till the law fulfilled. So although we're under the covenant of grace, we're still under law. See, Christ paid the price for keeping the law on our behalf. So as long as we are in Christ or under Christ, we fulfil the law. When we're not under Christ, then we're under law. And it's a bit like this. My children are under my roof. And while they're under my roof, they don't have to pay any bills. The bills are still there, they still come in, but they don't have to pay them because they're under my roof, they're under me. But if they move out from under my roof, they get bills and have to pay them. And it's the same with us. The law is there. The law has to be paid. But when we're under Christ, he pays the price of the law. He fulfills it as long as we're under him and in him. The moment we move outside him, we're subject to the law. Now the problem is, occurs, and I was talking to the Beth about this this morning actually, is that when your kids don't have to pay their bills, they tend to abuse. Ben thinks nothing of leaving the TV on, the lights are blazed, go out the front door when the heater's on, leave the front door wide open, uh, and so on. Because he doesn't have to worry about the bills. He doesn't do it on purpose. But he just doesn't appreciate what he's got. I guarantee when he moves out of the home, he won't leave the front door open when the heater's going or leave the lights on. He'll be conscious about turning the lights off and saving power when he's going to pay the bill. But at the moment, he tends to abuse it. And doesn't worry about it. And we can sometimes do that with God. We can sometimes abuse the grace that God has got. And I'm so thankful that I don't live in the Old Testament days. Partly because I don't think I could do half the priest's duties of slaughtering and and sacrifice and stuff like that. But also, because I was subject to the law, if they disobeyed, the wrath of God would come down on them at times. Because we're under grace, and we, we get the grace of God extended so much, we tend to abuse it. And I, I know I abuse it many, many times. I, I stuff up and it's, okay, sorry God. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I just go along my merry way at times without really appreciating how precious this grace that God gives us. Sometimes we listen to the voice that says we're not good enough to get the grace of God. And you know what? The voice is correct. But that's the glorious thing about grace. It's not who we are or what we've done that gets us grace. God extends his grace to everybody, regardless of who they are, their age, their nationality, their race, or what they've done. Now, grace is extended to us here, but it's also extended to the world. Everybody's available. It doesn't matter if you're the biggest drop kick around or the worst sinner. Grace is available to you. All you have to do is embrace Christ, and it's yours. And I love it. The disciples weren't perfect. They stuff up so many times. And they abused the grace that Jesus gave them. But he continually extended grace to them. When Christ washed 
the disciples' feet at the Last Supper. He washed all the disciples' feet, including Judas. Knowing quite well, as it had already been revealed to Christ what was happening, that Judas was going to betray him. Knowing that Judas was going to send him to, send him to the cross. On the cross, salvation came to one of the criminals that hung on the cross next to Christ because Jesus extended grace to this man and this man accepted it and got salvation. Have you ever been betrayed by somebody that's close to you? Maybe a close friend who's deliberately hurt you or sometimes undeliberately hurt you. It's always a bigger betrayal the closer that friend is. And it's not always easy to forgive and not always ex- easy to extend grace to that person. Jesus' best mate, Peter, Peter, the man who the Holy Spirit revealed to who Christ was. Peter, who Jesus chose to take to the mountain with him when they encountered Elijah and Moses. Peter, the only other man besides Jesus that got to walk on water. His best friend. Betrayed him. Not only did he fail to stand with him in his time of need, but he denied even knowing him. But what was Jesus' response when he encountered Peter later on? It was one of grace. He didn't wait for Peter to grovel and ask for forgiveness, he extended grace to him. I'm sure Peter would have grovelled. Scripture doesn't record it because Scripture doesn't think it's important. I think Scripture records Jesus' response to Peter of the extending grace to him. Amazing grace of God. We really struggle to comprehend what we get from God. I, I spoke a little while ago about sometimes we don't appreciate things till we haven't got them. You know, it's like you know, a glass of fresh water. We don't appreciate it here in Australia because we've got it so abundantly. But you can go over to a third world country. You know, I see that ad on TV where they have that glass of putrid water. And they say, would you give this glass of water to your children to drink? And you think, well, no way. I wouldn't even give it to my cat to drink. But they've got no choice. But they appreciate water. And it's the same with grace. We don't appreciate God's grace sometimes. We don't comprehend it and, and appreciate how awesome it is to we're put into a situation where it's really needed and we get a revelation of the awesomeness of God, the awesomeness of his grace and an insight here on how awesome God's grace is. John Newton got that revelation that one day when he was on a ship in that storm when he cried out to God, when he thought he was going to die. He got that revelation that how awesome is God's grace that he was a miserable man who had abused human beings all his life, treated them as, as like, like cattle. But yet, the moment he asked for it, he received that grace, that amazing grace. John Newton would get revelation on it and it would change his life. And because of that, we've got that awesome song, Amazing Grace. 
It's through grace that we can receive God. And it's through grace that we're able to change to be more like him. And it's through grace that flows through us that will touch and change the world. God extends his grace to us in abundance. And he gives it to us for free. No strings attached. So that we in turn can give it freely to other people that we encounter. And I have to admit, I'm still a work in progress with that. I'd love to say that I'm perfect and I give grace out to every person I encounter. But I'm sorry to say I can't. I'm still not right there. I still get legalistic at times with people and say, well, yeah, okay, I hear what you're saying. So if you do this, 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 then I might extend a bit of grace to you and I might forgive you. But that's not grace. That's law. But God is still working on me in that area. And I've got to admit, I flow a bit more in grace at the time. Been in a while I used to. But there's still times where I get that legal, under law attitude. And I, and I have to get smacked down by God. I say, hey, you got grace given to you. You share it. So we've got this awesome grace from God. And we're going to appreciate, we're going to dwell on it, and we're going to ask God to help us to, to comprehend it, but also to outwork it in our lives to other people. Praise God. Now I was interested to, to read in the paper the other day about Andrew Chan and um, Sukumara when they were executed. Now these are two guys that were drug dealers who end up in an Indonesian jail on death row mm. who found the grace of God mm. while in jail and, and became Christians. And as they were getting executed, they got everybody that was lined up to, to sing Amazing Grace mm. as they were shot mm. because they'd come to the realisation that the Amazing Grace of God mm. had extended to them even. Anyway, have a great day, all your mothers. Enjoy it. It only comes around once a year. <laughs> and to all the males, enjoy it as well. Mm. Have a great week and God bless.